Well, we'll dive into things. Whereabouts are you? If you're from Macclesfield and uh, you grew up there, riding there? Yeah, mate. Um, just south of Manchester, like northwest of England. Um, yeah, right on the edge of the Peak District, which is pretty good, really. Good for riding. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the Rangers don't really like you riding, but yeah, yeah. the places to go and just good hills, really. Big rolling hills, so nothing that that long but um yeah you can get like probably a six minute run on oh, like some of the drills pretty, uh, pretty good yeah i mean you <laughs> we, you got to make it tight you can't have fast tracks like having europe and stuff yeah because uh, you are just at the bottom in no time at all so you just got to spend a lot of time on hill figure out where you can get some good features in Win a bit of gradient here and there, the odd little climb, and um, yeah, make the most but, of it. But it's probably the thing for most of the UK riders that they, they don't have really the big mountains here, apart from in some parts of Wales and in Scotland. Yeah, true, man. Yeah, but it, yeah. it might actually make them better riders in in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll look at Brendan and all the Southern lads, for example. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They uh they're just riding the sand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> on yeah, mini bikes, yeah. dirt jump bikes, and trail bikes. They don't really touch a downhill bike, but yeah, they tune in all them other skills on various things, and, you and, just and even into... like um, Brendan back in the day when he was pretty much on the podium quite regularly, he didn't really train. He just did all of that. Yeah, I mean, we went down Woburn couple of years ago and did two days dirt jumping back yeah. to the back it was like being in the gym for two days <laughs> yeah. compression, you just, compression you just geeing out holding pumping and it's yeah. you do get strong from it it's not a it looks looks easy going but those boys yeah. are pretty bad aren't they and and they're yeah they're riding all the time so i think it um and digging yeah maintaining the trails that always keeps you strong doesn't it Sometimes I think uh, people put too much emphasis on the the gym stuff and not not enough on the riding or the actual fun part of the sport. Definitely, mate. I've been there. I've done it. Yeah, me too. And the squat rack, wearing weightlifting <laughs> shoes and that. And <laughs> <where Yeah. I'm laughs> <at> the... <laughs> Counting the number that's on the side of the plates, yeah. In it, just doing maths all day. I'm so strong now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be so much faster. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't... It is good to be strong, but it's horses for courses too. Some people absolutely love it, yeah. being in the gym, having numbers there. But um, there are other ways to get strong. Yeah, and I think yeah. the skill side of riding pays more than being super strong. At, for sure, if, mate. if you're already reasonably strong, you know, like if you're weak, then you need to get strong. But yeah, yeah, yeah you don't need to be squatting 200 kilos or whatever. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you snap your chain and just start getting. Yeah. But you might, you might win the race then. Anyway. Been, yeah, it works quite well. <laughs> maybe we've not been in the gym enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe that's the secret. That is it. But Too so much power, you, snap. Yeah, <laughs> like so, then. you've done all the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you could just cruise down with no chain and win the race. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> down. Yeah, no, nah, so. <laughs> thanks for if, that, lad. Seen if, a bit. <laughs> if only it was that easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oof. But it's that's another thing. It sometimes takes uh, like a, a fuck up in your racing to make things work better. I don't know for me. Yeah. Always yeah, something going it, wrong actually makes it go better. <laughs> yeah, it's a little trigger, isn't it, sometimes? Takes your mind off things. Yeah, yeah. Something happens, a bit of a, wow, bollocks. Yeah. Reset, <laughs> and then you just do, you're just riding then, aren't you? Yeah, and you're in the in the zone or whatever, as they say. Yeah, in the moment. Yeah, live it, living in the moment. It's a hard, <laughs> It's a hard thing to make yourself go into the moment without actually having something go wrong or um, yeah I, I don't know how people do it every time that's probably what makes the the best racer 
versus the guy that can do it once in a while. Yeah. I had a real good one at um, Cairns once. Yeah. And it was, it was so muddy. Um, those uplifts were taking ages to get us to the top. Yeah. Um, and I was doing my routine, started a warm up like an hour before, well, even before that. Got to the uplifting time and there was just no vehicle for ages. And I was, it was hot anyway, and I was sweating more than usual. I was like, oh, bollocks, I'm going to miss fucking qualifying run. <laughs> yeah. And it was when Scuzz was working with us, and we got to the top and literally ran from the fucking, uh, like, took the bike off the yeah. lift. And it was an uphill too. <laughs> yeah, in clay. Like, we wanted to try and keep the bike clean, so I duct tape around the tyres. Yeah. So we could wheel it places and it wouldn't get covered in shit. And we're running to start trying to pull this duct tape off. Goggle <laughs> on that. Get to start. And it must have been 30 seconds. And oh, set shit. off. And I had a good quality. I think it was top 10. I can't remember yeah, exactly. Yeah. And probably probably like the running there is like perfect warm up. Got you in the right heart rate. And then you're just like not even worried about your run. You just ride down and you yeah, you've like, made it. Oh, I've done perfect. it. <laughs> yeah, I've done, it. I've done qualies now. <laughs> I've not missed it. When you're sitting on the trailer, you're like, oh, shit, here we go. Get, trying to get yeah. in the zone and fire up. and yeah, <laughs> all, you, all you needed to do was run from the shuttle track. In it. <laughs> Seems like sometimes we just overcomplicated it, but, yeah. but it's so hard to emulate, like, undercomplicating it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's when it's out of your control that it's... It's just a, yeah, a big buzz. Even and if, you're just buzzing when you get to the start. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you're like, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Even if you have an injury or something, you're like focused on the injury and not worried about the race. And then it can be, often be easier because you're like, oh, I'm injured, so I'm not going to do well. And then you, you're you not putting pressure yeah. on your result. No pressure at all. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. getting down is an accomplishment sometimes. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. And uh, you you probably ridden with a few injuries in your day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. plenty, mate. Nothing. Um, Nothing too bad. Well, no. Well, I'm not a huge fan of going to the hospital. So, <laughs> like, you know how it is. You hurt yeah. yourself, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, it'll be right. And then two or three weeks later, it's still hurting. <laughs> yeah. You're like, like, shit, maybe I should have gone and got that checked out. <laughs> yeah, it's not right. <laughs> Yeah, it's things with like ribs and just big body impacts that have been, well, my least favourite because it's just breathing yeah. in effort, coughing, laughing. Yeah. And you can't even do anything about it. You just got to. You, you can't really ride well with ribs. Like, it's no, just it's so <laughs> painful. Yeah, you can't do anything, mate. It's horrible. Yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. I get a lot of kids messaging me about how to get sponsored and stuff. I'm like, just ride your bike. It's like kind of they focus on the sponsorship or that side of things, and it's kind of the wrong approach, I think. It doesn't really matter, the sponsorship anyway. No, it doesn't. Um, ride bikes. Yeah. Just ride your bike, get out there. And I, I always find that the simpler the bike, the more you learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like a hardtail is the best. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. Go ride your local trail on. Well, even a fixie, mate. Yeah. Just go yeah. and ride a fixie for half an hour, and you're like, oh yeah, this is, this and, is different. Yeah, you can't stop pedaling. You've got to <laughs> really figure things out. Think about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then get yeah. on a BMX, and it's just so lively and small, and yeah, everything yeah. out it's twitchy, and you're like, oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Get on your downhill bike, and it's like. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sofa, magic carpet sort of thing that just goes so fast, it's almost insane. It's like kind of most of the young kids now they get the best trail bike to start with, but that doesn't help them, I don't think. Like no, normally, they don't feel the ground or anything. <clears throat> yeah, and they they so the bike's doing everything for them, and then they just plow down and don't really have to do too much. No. Nah. No, so I, I did a winter on a like 130 mil front fork hardtail cross country bike once. Yeah. And that was awesome. Yeah, just, yeah. I don't even think I had a dropper on it. And it was just 
so raw and bouncy and <laughs> you have to think about everything and the, the smallest route would you'd be like well that's gonna have me gotta <laughs> think about that and yeah, yeah, yeah. You become so much more tuned in with all the little bits and levels of traction and things like that that when you do get on a bigger bike it's just well it opens up so much more yeah and you're probably hitting your lines so much cleaner because you had to do that yeah yeah be consistent as well it's like on the i have have a cross-country hardtail that i rode heaps in the lockdown yeah yeah and you just can't you can't break in the holes. Like you can't break into a turn. You have to go on the smooth part, break a little bit, and then rail the turn. You can't can't be breaking when there's a hole. Otherwise, no. you're, you're offline straight away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it? it's so good for your riding. Yeah, looking up far ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> it's where the, those cross country races don't get enough credit. I don't think. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, so think, hard. Yeah. Physically as well, even on those bikes, like. You're smoked after an hour. Yeah. And even the 120 mil travel things, if they can't go fat, well, they do go flat out on them, but if me and you were to ride one, it would just fall apart. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? yeah. At their yeah, pace, it's, it's, it's whole so light. Yeah. Hail of hiding, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I went, I actually went to a cross country race a couple of weeks ago in Switzerland. And uh, it was just a small one, but Nino was racing. So we followed him in the practice a little bit and just, he was using no effort and like just accelerating on rough, bumpy route uphills, like accelerating the whole time. Yeah, like, he's powerful, isn't he? And, and without using any, like, like I was in rattled to shit and he's, he's just smooth over everything. Yeah. It's like impressive to watch. <clears throat> yeah, have you seen his, um, some of his training videos? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's a machine, isn't he? Yeah, and he's just the insane balance with with weights and everything, all, yeah. all combined. Not not just your your standard massive uh, weight. No, or yeah, it's like well, technical, really hard, isolating yeah. different muscles while balancing and yeah. putting different other things. It, it was imp- impress- impressive. Impressive to w- watch him. Uh, Riding as well, like he's just ridiculous on that flat, rooty shit that's horrible to ride. He he could yeah. just accelerate and carry speed. Mm. Yeah, good on him. Yeah, he went to Revolution Bike Park and pushed up because all the COVID stuff still. Oh, shit. Like, yeah, pushed up back to the old days. Yeah, but honestly, bro, it was one of the best days I've had there. Really. Yeah, there's so a you made it count. Yeah, and you just you get really stuck into bits. Oh yeah, so you're doing a section, you have to get it right. Yeah, and you look at it, and when there's an uplift, you don't look yeah. at it. You yeah. just bomb through them like, yeah, I mean, I'll do another one. <laughs> when when you could have got it way better if you actually looked at it and focused on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, I'll get two inches to the right there, and it'll can get inside that thing, and then. That'll boost me the whole next straight, stuff like that. And it's just picking little bits out. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's probably what what does make the UK riders so good. Like, There's so many good riders here now. It's crazy. Yeah, I keep forgetting you're here when you say here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've moved yeah. here, yeah, yeah. But I'm yeah. Still, still a fair way away from you, mate. I'm a, I'm a southerner now. <laughs> I know, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Drink half pints of shandy next. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Going to 2007, your first World Cup. You you'd done a few fair few nationals before that, or you were just pretty green to it. Um, yeah, plenty of nationals, <clears throat> and I'd always compare my results at a national all the while through you yeah. to lads that were racing World Cups um, and just seeing where I'd be. Because back then there was no um, junior category, so yep. if you're at a World Cup, you just start to qualify. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I actually think that's not a bad thing because now it's quite a big step to go from junior when you have 30 juniors qualifying every race. 
It's quite yeah. a big step to go from junior to being elite. For sure, mate. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> but but especially when they cut it down to 60 now as well. Like. Yeah, I don't get that at all. Because I reckon the ADF guy can go in the top 10 now. Like, he could. Oh, definitely. Potentially. Yeah. If, if his day went well and everything, even if his um, shuttle was late and he had to run to the start, he might go in the top 10. <laughs> yeah, mate. Well, there's some, some tracks where there's 80 riders on like 10 to 12 seconds, I think. Yeah. yeah. And the, the top 10 would be, say, have five of those seconds for them lot. Yeah. So there's a there's not a lot of time for someone to jump, like you say, from 80th to 10th. No. Or 7th to 12th or something. Yeah, and, and he might have had a mistake in this qualifying run as well. Yeah. As well. And yeah. then one mistake can put him back there as well. Like, if yeah. he has a stall out in the corner, and you, you lose a few seconds already. Yeah. It's the wrong corner. Yeah, or slip a pedal out the start or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is now, though. It's like, or 10. Yeah. <laughs> like, depending which yeah. position you're in, it can be 10 yeah. places. <laughs> yeah, it can. Easy. It's pretty yeah. uh, pretty gnarly for that, but I think I think when they had the no junior thing, it actually groomed probably the juniors to be better riders because they didn't get this two years of comfort that was yeah. the junior category. They were straight in, yeah, at World Cup for the first time racing the heroes, yeah, in the and thick it, of it, thinking yeah, it's like it's yeah. it sink sink or swim then, like you're, yeah, you're, yeah. And you've got a year or so to have a go at it, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No, you, you're you probably, out, mate. You probably know by the end of the year if it's going to go well or not. Yeah, you can normally tell beforehand as well. Yeah, you can see the kids that are talented, today. Yeah, and same with like just trying to get UCI points. Yeah. I remember being in youth, and I got a top 10 at a national, so I would have got a UCI point. Yeah, I could have yeah. still a World Cup. Yeah. I was like, right, I mean, I've earned me. Yeah. I'm capable, sort of thing. I can do yeah. it. Um, so then, so then, going to Vigo, you were like, you knew you could do it. In a way, yeah. Yeah. But I kind of, well, qualifying, mate. There's like two big rock rolls. Second rock roll was like a step down into a right under, and I was just panicking. Went straight over, straight yeah. over the turn into the tape, and I'm like, oh. Oh. and then it was just like. Whew, Right, I'm just going to have to give it everything now. Pulled the yeah. bike out, ran up, set off and made it in. Oh! Yeah, yeah see, so you made it in, you know. Yeah, mate, that was that. And then and it then, rained in the final, so I had a good good, um, good final result. 17th when, or 18th. 17th so. at your first World Cup. Yeah. It's probably uh, up there mm. with some of the best uh, World Cup debuts. Yeah. It, yeah, I think it is. I'm, I reckon it's been done now, though. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. By, I'm not sure, though, because your first World Cup as a junior, if you get 17th in the elite, you're like, you're a boss, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it did rain, so it's one of them, but... Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know... The, yeah. The, we'll um, no, no one looks at the weather forecast. They look at the results sheet. True, mate, <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was... Oh, Oh seven. Oh seven, mate. And it was Fort William Worlds. Yeah. Later that year, and then I was going to race Maribor because I've done Vigo, and I was like, oh yeah, I've, I can do a World Cup. I'll do that as well. Yeah. Um, but then Fort Bill Worlds in qualifying had a huge one at yeah. the bottom. And <laughs> off, I had that big off the, but, yeah. And, oof. Off the fly off. That was no good. Yeah, no good, mate. Big crash. Um, yeah. I've been trying to get my hands on the footage of that. Uh, yeah, someone Stu, must have it. Yeah, Stu Thompson's got it, I think. Yeah. From the MTB Cut days. Uh, yeah, I think, I think I remember seeing it on the... It was on an MTB Cut video of some sort. Yeah, I've got it. I had it on an old laptop, but... Yeah, it was I'm huge. Still, yeah, <laughs> mate. Crashed yeah. at like half one and came round about 8pm. What? Yeah, vomited in my helmet. Got everything. That long? 
Yeah, I remember like um, an injection in the hand because it was like a a pinch sort of yeah. feeling. And then I remember getting wheeled into the hospital on the bed because the wheels were like chattering up the concrete yeah. ramp. And yeah. tried to sit me up for an x ray. And and then I just phew, fell down again, I think, and pissed oh. myself. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it was about 8 pm. And I was just like, I was just in hospital, like, whoa. And my phone was there. I had loads of texts. Yeah. It was like 8.31, I think I remember it being. And I was just like in and out of like sleeping, coming around, nurses checking on me. Yeah. And then in the middle of the night, bro, I woke up and there was this naked bloke covered in blood, like cut on his head, just like stood next to the bed. <laughs> what? Yeah, pissed up. Like, oh, no. Scared the life out of me, so I was straight on the... Beeper. On the other thing. Yeah. Oh, my God, what was this? And, um, yeah. yeah, weird. They took him away or moved me into a different room, maybe. Especially uh, with a concussion. <laughs> you just think, like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, man. <laughs> weird. But then the big crash, anyway, collarbone was smashed, but nothing else. Um, but before the days where anyone really spoke about concussion are out, so... yeah. Basically, next day, I went straight back to where we were staying with the British cycling lot. Yeah. Got all this in to watch the four cross. Someone offered me a beer. I was like, all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a beer. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had a big crash. I need to recover. It's chilling. <laughs> oh, and, shit. Yeah. And, yeah. Probably shouldn't have done that, but... But you recovered all right from that yeah, one. It took like, a while, it took a while. Yeah, I had surgery on for the collarbone and that. Um, but for about probably two months, like every time I lay down at night, the room would spin like fuck. Oh. Every time I'd sit up in the morning, I'd spin out. Yeah. But then I was sleeping for like 14 hours, and then I knew I was getting better because it would go down to like 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. And then 10 hours, 9 hours, and I was like, yeah, yeah, getting normal, better. More normal, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's probably not spoke about enough, really, the old concussions. Well, you can't see it either, can you? No, so you don't know what, what's I'm actually happened. It's a big gash. People yeah. make more more fuss about a big cut than the hit to the head, don't they? Or even, even a, a fraction some sort of fracture you know like you, you're like oh no you can't ride for six weeks so it's yeah. clear but yeah. if your your brain's injured it's like oh no I'm, I'm fine tomorrow yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's but you can't see it and you can't really scan it either so you like mm -hmm. surely they must have some way to scan it now but you'd think They've got it, haven't they? yeah like yeah all they scan for is a brain brain bleed, but that's like when it's super serious and you'd have a big problem. But yeah, but surely you can scan and see the bruising. There must be something. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. There's not an efficient way of testing it, is there? Wow. Well, but you you're doing it yourself again as well, we? Yeah. So it was all the same like component sponsors, but Mondraker helped me out with a few frames. Yeah. Well, for, yeah. Done quite yeah. a few years privateer, really. After it would have been hard doing the full factory and then going backwards to to the privateer yeah. again. Well, I'd done probably four or five, no, probably three or four years prior to that in vans. Yeah. yeah. Just that was what I knew. Yeah. So I'd had the luxury and then gone, like you say, gone back to being in a van. But I do, I do prefer it in a way. Yeah, having your own oh. setup and how you want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And I go to a race, and I'm at the race, and I've got all my stuff with me. Yeah. And it's just real chill. Yeah. yeah. Chill. Probably less. Yeah, a lot less stress. Yeah, and you're not yeah. travelling from place to place and checking in, checking out, and. Yeah, yeah. And it does. It's a lot of time doing that. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't. I don't want for out like that. 
It's like no. I don't need a, a big house to be sleeping in. Yeah, normally you sleep pretty well in the van, don't you? Yeah, and yeah. <clears throat> well, real well, actually. Yeah. You're like, you're in this little pod of... <laughs> yeah. And it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. wobbling about, chilling. <laughs> yeah. And you just roll out of bed, kettle on, sound. But then and the first first team you went on to would have been after Cannondale, which... The which Sun Montgomery team. Oh, yeah, Sun, yeah. Yeah, with Camelini. So, Camelini, yeah. And Joe Connell. Joe Connell, sure, he's, yeah, yeah. he's been around a while as well, were not Yeah, he was a junior yeah. on the team. It was it was good fun actually. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, that mate. was a bit of an bit of an eye opener hanging out with Camelini for a bit. Yeah, he's another style. He's a stylish Frenchman. So you've gone oh, from yeah. the American to the Frenchman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a regular uh, Monaco visitor, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got he's his bike there. shop there now, isn't it? Is, is it in Monaco? His I don't know if it's in Monaco. I think it might be like... It's pretty nearby, though, eh? Yeah, 100 metres down the road from yeah. Monaco. On yeah. that little little bit that sticks out where it's yeah. pretty fancy. But, yeah, he we talked about him on um, Paige's podcast, and, yeah, he's he's another rider that was pretty bloody good, eh? Like, oh, on, his, on his day, he was really good. Yeah, he'd had a... A good result at Peter Maritzburg, I think, the year yep. before, something like that. So we'd gone there with him to race, um, and we were walking the track. He's like, "This turn, never break, never break on this." I was like, "All right." All right. So I came in in practice, and I was just like, "Don't break, don't break." And I got into it. I was like, "Fucking hell!" <laughs> I'm like, are you sure you're not breaking on that penny? <laughs> no, never break. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah, he, he was, yeah, he was ace. He was a, a clever dude as well. Ooh. You silly bugger. Baby. <laughs> Dad's just had a crash and he's motorbike. Oh, no. Shit. He's alive. Yeah, yeah. Check him out. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> and the and the knee as well. It's not oh. only my bike, my baby, my nineteen forty nine Triumph. I've just chucked up the road. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh shit. So come over the railway bridge. Went in the you know a bit of a dip. A dip. I was obviously going too quick. Footrest grounded. And just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I know how you boys feel now. I felt like I was rolling for about three miles. <laughs> oh. No. Well, that really good as well, Win. Yeah, you yeah. you you're good, James. Well, you, mate. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, mate. <laughs> Shit. I'm I'm better than you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm mainly embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the first time we've had someone crash on the podcast, so it's good. <laughs> Make it interesting anyway. Uh, I'll yeah. picture of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks... So where are you getting it from? <laughs> yeah, yeah we... out of control. <laughs> <laughs> so then you um, kind of... You got that podium, you probably felt like you met already some of your goals. Yeah, um... Well, yeah, I was buzzing, mate. It was a um, World Cup podium, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the pinnacle of the sport. Like, you can't... Yeah. You, I, I think you can't compare it to an enduro podium or a downhill podium's the pinnacle. Yeah, the intensity of a downhill run is... Yeah, is it's... It's, up there. it's ten, 10 times more compared to the enduro. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. Like enduros, enduros, you can have a few mistakes and everything, and and still probably stand on the podium. Yeah. yeah. And the downhill, it's probably that much more rewarding to come down with a clean run, everything went well, and you get on the podium. That's got to be a special day. Yeah, and it's just when you push that little bit, and you're like, I've had a few moments, and you do in a race, and you do your exact same line as you've done loads of times, but the back end steps out. Yeah. Like, Whoa. And this is just... what happened. And, and you just 
whoa. And you're just buzzing your head off. And, yeah. But and it just happens and it, you can't control it. You don't really know how to control it, but you're just riding it and you're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. It's all just intuitive. <laughs> so a muscle memory, I don't know what it is, but... Yeah, the intense the intensity level is very high. I say. Yeah, you can't really go higher. I don't think than a no. downhill race run. There's not many other sports that even compare. Or probably downhill skiing is the closest. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And well, I I really like how close the competitors are. Uh, not competitors, the spectators are. Yeah, yeah, you're close to them the whole time. Yeah, and the, the track's lined with them, shouting at you. So you feel the energy as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's something it's else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just sometimes you probably even push too hard because of the, the crowd energy and the, the vibe, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's especially, a new level. especially if you've already made a mistake, then you're like, oh, show them now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'll show them I'm not messing about. <laughs> yeah, you're like out of control. I'm 15 seconds back and I'm still out of control. Yeah, yeah. just for them though, eh? Yeah, peeps down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah, that that is the the best thing in the downhill. So it must have been a good good feeling to tick off that as a goal, a World Cup yeah. podium. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, yeah, and it's still up there, mate. I'll I want another go. 